Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This Satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters, especially regarding the path of knowledge. And we also contact our program in this group. So all questions are most welcome. Sanjay is asking, are there any techniques to identify existing tendencies in causal body? If you observe your own behavior, your own speech and thought, you will come to know what is there in the causal body because this physical body is simply manifestation of the causal body. This is the most accurate technique. Then the other techniques are more into the occult where you go into the dream worlds and so on to find out that which is suppressed or that which is going to be your next pre-location but usually that is unimportant. The current tendencies which are being manifested they are most important and they are already can be seen already right now. Siddharth is asking is thought in itself karmic even if no action is taken? Yes, the thought is an action. Karmic means action. So why it is an action and uh, why the action done by the speech or the body is more real action. The only difference is the consequences. The consequences of thinking manifest later and the consequences of speaking, they take a little bit of time but not that much time. But whatever you do, the consequences are almost at the same time. So always remember that everything is happening in the memory. When the body is acting, actually it is changes in the memory, nothing else. When we are speaking, it is changes in the memory. Thinking, changes in the memory. Whenever change is caused, it is called an action. So from this perspective of the memory model, action is simply action. Usually we are expecting the consequences in the physical world. And because thought is somewhat far away from the physical world, it takes a little bit of time to manifest. But the consequences of the thought are seen instantly in the thought itself. If you think something negative, you will see that there are negative emotions. Then there is a chain of negative thoughts. That is the consequence. However, if you are plotting somebody's murder or something like this, that can happen very late in the physical or sometimes may not happen. Some other thoughts can overpower this thought. So it takes some time to get to the physical level, but ultimately they are all vibrations. Those who don't know this, they keep thinking something without any control. And their belief is that there are no consequences of thinking. I can think anything, good, bad, but there are always consequences of any change made in the memory. Vikas is asking, since there is no individual doer, Towards whom does the prarabdha preallocation applies? Obviously to the creature that has taken the birth because preallocation simply means the list of actions, the list of work, jobs this creature is programmed to do. There is no doer. There is this machine which simply executes whatever is allocated to it or it tries to do it. Vishal has a question. What is destiny? Is destiny predetermined? or we can create our destiny. Actually, the destiny means predetermination. It means that which is bound to happen. So, since there is no doer, nobody can change it. Because if we say it is predetermined, that means there is no chance of changing anything. And here the word we means the humans, the body-mind. Uh, they are actually predestined to follow whatever happens to them. There is no nobody who can change anything. That is the meaning of predetermination. So as soon as somebody says that I can change that which is predetermined, that simply means that nothing is predetermined then. If you can change one thing, that means you can change everything. So the whole concept becomes meaningless. So as soon as you say predetermined, that must mean logically that cannot be changed. But there is opposing concept that whatever we do is done by our own will. And that is totally false because there is no doer. Nobody has the will. Nobody owns the willing process. So ultimately, you must find something which transcends the two extreme views because these both views are extreme and they are very limited. So what is the middle view? That things are happening. The events are simply happening. And since there are infinite possibilities in the existence, anything can happen. But it is not done by somebody. Everything is not predetermined. However, nobody can determine it. 
So how does it happen? It happens according to something we call the laws of the mind or laws of the memory or laws of the illusion. This illusion operates in this part of the memory, in this part of the universal memory according to some laws. And these law, laws, they govern what will happen, not the individual. The individual is a product of the laws. Uh, this is the middle ground. If the law says that yes, there is something which must happen in this way only, like the karmic law, then yes, that will happen like this. Nobody can change it because there is nobody to change anything. And if there is some law which says that there is some scope of deviation, it is not really determined what can happen, then whatever is the current situation will happen. Depending on that current situation, something will happen. So this is the middle ground and all, all three ideas are simply ideas. And what is the truth? Nobody knows the truth. The illusion is unknowable. Why? Because it is me. I am the illusion and I am unknowable. So all we can do is just guess something about it. And ultimately your experience will determine what is the truth. If your experience says that no, everything is already written somewhere and it is being executed like a movie. The movie is already printed. Now it is being shown. If your experience says something like this, then that is the truth for you. If your experience says no, I am free to will whatever I do, then yes, that is the truth. And if the experience is in between, like some things are random, some things are fixed, then that is the truth. So because this is the illusion, it does not yield to any inquiry about the truth. Because the nature of the illusion is that it is false. So whatever you come up as an explanation about, of the illusion will be false. I usually give this example of the movies that, you know, there is a bank robbery scene in the movie. Now something goes wrong and they get caught. Now nobody knows actually. The movie ends there and it, they, probably there is part two of the movie where their plot is exposed and so on. And the viewers then, they go about finding the cause, finding an explanation of what happened. And they make up many, many stories that like, this must have happened, that must have happened. Somebody told, somebody betrayed in their gang and so on, you see. And they will give the proofs. Look, this scene in the movie shows that this was bound to happen, so on. But what are they doing? Whatever they are saying is actually false because the whole movie is false. Remember this. Whatever explanations and logic they come up with about the events in the movie will be totally false. Why? Because the movie itself is false. Whatever you talk about the movie will be a story. Nothing true. No robbery happened. Nobody got caught. So it has an entertainment value only. Like you must have seen the review videos on YouTube of every movie where they dissect frame by frame. And I say, what is this, this madness? But they are enjoying immensely. So this illusion has only one value. Entertainment. Play. Leela. And there is no point in dissecting it frame by frame. There is po no point in trying to find a cause of something or to make very strong opinions or to, you know, believe something so strongly. It is false. And that is why in the Advait philosophy, we don't do not study the illusion because <laughs> its study is also false. Be the truth. Remain the truth. That is the recommendation. Be in awareness. Watch the play. It is for entertainment. Don't set your head on fire because you don't understand it. Because you will never understand it. You can make one statement about it and you will find that in another world, another dimension, exactly opposite is happening. Now what is true? Nothing is true here. So when we go and try to study the illusion, we only get a headache, not knowledge. So I think these were the words of Gautam Buddha or somebody like this. I don't remember who said this. You don't even try to understand the Maya, you will only get a headache. I read it in on internet, I don't know how true this thing is, saying is, quotation. And I, I heard this story of Sri Krishna also that his brother asked him or somebody asked him, I think, you are the all-knowing God, please tell us about Maya. And he immediately became nervous and he said, Krishna said, please ask me anything but don't ask me about Maya. So in Advait, the discussion about the Maya is only for entertainment purposes. We should not take anything seriously that we say about what is happening, what is manifested. Other than that, it is my false face. It is my illusionary face. The true face is the experiencer.
or the witness that is most important but nothing more can be said about it so highly boring isn't it like uh, the movie screen if no movie is playing there is a blank screen what what can you talk about it how long can you stare at it yes it's peaceful that's all blank that is the truth as soon as the movie starts now it is mind blowing awesome it is a fa- it is false the false is entertaining the truth is boring plain blank fully knowing this you can talk about the illusion those who simply talk about the illusion as if they are gaining the knowledge uh, they are ignorant people siddhant is saying certain things like aging can be predetermined no it is possible to reverse your age or die prematurely everything is possible <laughs> like i said as soon as you make a statement you can give an example where it did not happen like this yes the illusion is very complicated and why is it so complicated because of the enormous possibilities like one scientist had given this example of a ball of string you take a long string and just throw it on the floor few times pick it up flew through and you will see that it has arranged itself in a most complex way you will not be able to un- untangle it it will take you at least 1 hour to untangle make it straight again but how much time it took get into that position of complexity 1 second if you throw it again the ta- untangle sorry the tangled ball of string if you throw it again on the floor will it spontaneously arrange into a straight string what is the probability or or, or will it simply take a round shape perfect circle shape by itself can somebody tell me why this never happens in illusion why everything goes from order to disorder here everything becomes so complex any ideas why the illusion is not like this you say that you throw a handful of clay and it arranges into a clay pot beautiful flower pot or something the reverse is seen that you throw the clay pot or flower pot and then it arranges itself into a pile of clay vikas is saying law of entropy yes but that is substituting the words entropy also says the same thing that entropy always increases that is what i am saying why mandita is saying it has to happen like this because of its cyclic nature i don't know why cyclic nature comes here obviously the clay is more complex shape than the clay pot the clay pot is very regular simple shape vikas is saying can't be answered since to talk about it would be to investigate the cause of illusion which is impossible we are not talking about the cause of illusion here this is established that it is unknowable ultimately it is unknowable but we can find an explanation of simple things like in science siddhant is saying the potential wants to express as many possibilities as, as it can it is partially true yes siddhant's answer is a little bit true arvind is saying because arranged form has very very small probability out of billions of arra- arranged possibility yes this is exactly true arvind's answer is very good jesh may be entropy is always high because it all starts from binary change reduced to that only that is also good guess when the extreme end of something it is the simplest start of many other things from simplest to complex so it is simply the fact that there are so many ways to arrange the this dirt particles let us say 1 kg of dirt you have clay uncountable particles are there so mathematics says that if you simply throw it <laughs> there are countless ways to arrange those particles and the arrangement of a flower pot will be just one out of the infinite ways to arrange so it will never happen actually this is basic mathematics and science and now you can ask you know why it is like this only now there is no answer to this why there has to be unlimited possibilities and why it cannot do this this magic trick of arranging itself into a flower pot there is no answer to this question you can get intermediate answers sometimes and they are not satisfactory actually like somebody can ask if it is illusion why can't we arrange the illusion so that they, the when we throw the clay it always forms into something good some good shape and the answer is yes <laughs> why not probably you can make a world where throwing the, this clay powder arranges itself in something good something something beautiful it is possible right now where, where wherever we are the law of entropy is the governing law siddhant is saying randomness is fundamental pattern fundamental patterns might occur in yes randomness or you can say 
all the possibilities they form the background and if very few patterns are meaningful for the mind now you can take another creature which is totally different from you like a, an alien and probably they can see a pattern there which you cannot see so our minds they demand a certain kind of pattern to be recognized as low entropy or meaningful probably very very simple kinds we are limited to very simple kinds but probably there can be a mind there can be an intelligence that can decode you know something which looks totally random and complex to us like the ball of the string or something like you must have watched the movie uh, rain man where uh, tom cruise he drops a box of matchsticks on the floor somebody remember this movie <laughs> it is very good movie actually he drops a box of matchsticks on the floor and all the matchsticks they fall out and that fellow i forgot his name he counts all of them in one second dustin hoffman thank you and he even says that look when is missing he is so confident that you know when he counts he he comes up with a number and he says no one is missing and actually the one was missing so how is that possible what kind of mind he had he was a genius we could not find any pattern in that he could and something similar is shown in this movie called a beautiful mind so what are we exploring here is this possibility that probably nothing is random it is our limitation if you take the universal memory for example and you imagine a being with that kind of universal memory then probably nothing is random you see everything is meaningful even after the entropy action of millions and billions of year that being can find out the pattern there you can call him god if you want so nothing is random in the god's mind but we are we are tiny wayne you see we can't remember 10 ten, ten digit numbers also because they look like random to us so this very entertaining discussion about the science and the maya and vj is saying can we call it field of infinite possibilities yes yes probability distribution field so that is what is me actually there is nothing which is manifested in me there is only possibility in me this emptiness has infinite possibility which is i am the intellect cannot understand what is here so we use our intellect to simply clear what it has understood wrongly we remove the avidya it is called the avidya and we gain nothing actually because what will you gain if you have infinite possibilities what will you know so ultimately this is unknowable whatever is is unknowable and that is me i am unknowable arvind is asking how is study of maya different from modern science what is difference in approach i think it is fundamentally the same when the ancient people they started study of the illusion they found this empirical science experimental science we form the hypothesis then we test it using experiments and then we arrive at some solution this is very ancient there is nothing modern about it in fact that science was probably more developed than current science so what is the difference between this kind of study systematic approach and the modern approach in the modern science is very very limited to only study of physical world which physical world the inanimate whatever you call as medicine or psychology is actually called a soft science not a hard science in medicine and psychology the scientific method is not followed that much mostly hit and trial is done but when the ancient people studied the illusion it was absolutely systematic and that is what we call as tantra in india so the modern science is a small and degraded branch of tantra which has become somewhat limited and why has this happened because the study of the inanimate is very useful for survival when they study the medicine they treat the body as an object a mechanical kind of machine which is very good actually because body is like this partially and then the approach they take to the study of the mind is also mechanical like it is a, before the computer came it was seen as a machine so that much is the limitation of the modern approach and why this happened because this is very useful for survival what crops will grow faster in this climate how to build a building how to make a machine how to make a weapon this does not require the uh, knowledge of the full illusion or this, this does not even require this knowledge that it is an illusion it simply requires uh, empirical science 
which means experimentation and then you can use your, your intellect to manipulate this thing and produce the machines and tools and so on even cures so um, this is very limited form of study for example the medicine if you take there are two parts according to me one is surgery and the other is the chemotherapy so what surgery is doing it is not healing anything actually it simply arranges the body parts in such a way that that the natural healing of the body happens better way like if you break a bone they will operate on you and they will arrange the bone so that you know the natural healing can be assisted a little bit it is not that the body parts are remade or something like this chemotherapy simply a process of refinement of what is happening what is occurring naturally you take the turmeric you do the experiments with it and then you get the active ingredient in it what is it in the turmeric that is curing this disease just refine that natural thing and you will get the vaccine or whatever medicine you can copy it by synthetically producing the same you can see how limited it is when the tantra goes a little bit deeper there it can actually create a body it can actually heal the body <laughs> although they claim it but very difficult to get the evidence so modern science is mostly hacking the nature not really creative although we, we should not say like this because whatever has been done is already magnificent very good but uh, the drawback is that the old knowledge is lost in this limelight of modern science people have stopped studying that knowledge which is very very old very ancient which is still more fundamental and pure and it got distorted because you know there are no pioneers in that field although there are but single individuals isn't it so it is getting wasted arvind is asking is tantra's approach as objective as modern science or more subjective is consciousness used as a tool for exploring and arriving at conclusion yes tantra's approach is probably more systematic and objective than modern science it is immensely logical there are no words like objective or, or subjective in tantra nothing is objective and nothing is subjective it is all illusion is consciousness used as a tool i don't know the meaning of the word consciousness we never use it so probably you can define your words first because in advait philosophy there is no word for consciousness we have the atman brahman and so on maya there is no word like consciousness in tantra also there is devi that's all vikas is asking it has it can become difficult sometimes to communicate since i know their view in illusion hasn't been even shaken is this normal period one goes through during post awakening yes it is normal and because they do not understand you must understand you must because they cannot uh, you see adjust so you should adjust this is the solution and uh, always remember that it will not remain like this these people will not remain with you for forever speed with which this creature is evolving depending on that they will be all be left either in this lifetime or in coming three or four lifetimes four maximum like my guru says i don't know how they arrived at this number there is no proof for it but as soon as you meet your guru four lifetimes is the maximum and after that the whole human birth is transcended so i have seen it with my own eyes my own experience says the same thing that uh, as soon as it becomes difficult to communicate that means the breaking has begun it is uh, a sign of what is coming you see at the subtle level already the causal bonds are being broken what do you mean by causal bonds the sanskrit word is the rinanubandh is being taken care of now thanks to the guru field or whatever you want to call it now because we don't know how this happens we think that it is happening because of the knowledge that i have now i have become somebody else no it is changes in the memory structure whatever bonds we form with people are due to ignorance so since you know this well you know this better than the these ignorant people you will need to adjust somehow but uh, it is all going now Jayesh is saying, "What's the difference between objectives or goals or path of occult and P O K? Do they have same destination? Does the initiation really lead to bliss, or one has to decide if I have a desire?" You see, the goal of occult is desire fulfillment, and the goal of path of knowledge is destruction of ignorance. Totally different. 
satiation does not lead to bliss bliss you are already you are already it so how can you become the bliss how can you get it not by doing something so what does it do it simply gives you the freedom to do whatever you want the occult gives you the freedom to play in the illusion freedom to what this creature not to the self not to the experiencer it is already free so if you disidentify with the desires then obviously the the play is not going to take place so those who are in the occult they glorify their desires rather than you know it is opposite they hold their desires as the blessings of the devi and they do whatever they can to fulfill it obviously it will never get fulfilled so new desires come but ultimately progress happens out of the human world arvind is saying by consciousness i mean one's awareness subjective perception a subjective perception the perception is always subjective there is no objective perception and the perception is called as the experience anubhav and one's awareness means nothing and the person has no awareness the person is an is a perception whatever you are looking at the mind body and whatever it thinks i am the the ego ahankar is actually an experience so that is why we don't use this word because this word has no meaning the word consciousness has no meaning in advait so my recommendation to arvind is go systematic a b c d learn the words and do not use random words do not make up the meanings in your mind what will you achieve nothing confusion only right now the terminology is so different that you cannot even meaningfully talk to me yes if you talk about the politics and the sports yes the terminology may match there but this is philosophy we cannot use the words from the internet and dictionary to talk about it philosophy means you must study under the master for several years and then the question that you form will have some meaning it will be meaningful otherwise no otherwise i say one thing and you say other thing it is oranges and apples and tomatoes so the right question should be for arvin should be that should i use this word consciousness in your philosophy or how to arrive how to explore this okal what are the methods you know fundamental questions or simply what is okal why should we explore it something like this you see basics what what are you teaching what is this path of knowledge what words are being used here what are the definitions of this wo- um, the words we are using these should be your questions and obviously that is why we have the program without the program it is impossible to talk to me and remember every teacher is going to use their own terminology because this is philosophy sometimes they talk about the same thing but they use different words and english is actually the poorest language to talk about philosophy very poor and no standardization has been done there there are no traditions there nothing whatever there was is totally distorted so that is why we invented our own terminology to teach non dualism you can check the translations of these people you know ramand maharshi nisardat and vivekanand and all using some kind of different language if you check the sanskrit same exactly same because sanskrit is the language of philosophy not english and that is why i i do not allow mixing of english and hindi and whatever vikas is saying there is a very strong bond between my father and i is it possible that both our body minds could be participate precipitation of the same causal body it sometimes feels that the causal body had decided to pay out its karma with two simultaneous expressions of father and son is it possible yes it is possible but uh, the chances are very less a causal body that can take two births will be highly evolved so what is the uh, what is more po- probable more, more possibility is that there is a karmic bond between these two causal bodies there is a strong give and take and that that connection can become so strong that you know it looks like as if one this is not your case only this is the case for many people their causal bodies are so strongly bond bonded with other people that they take they repeatedly take birth there your son will be your grandfather and your sister will be your grandmother something like this is a great 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 grand somebody pair uh, whatever you call ancestors they keep coming in the same family same genetic lineages or we say blood so rarely it will happen that some unknown causal body takes birth in through this one mother no always somebody who is bonded with this mother 
for the father always and this is also a karmic law you can say like he was saying whether it is predetermined it is so if the bonds are so, so strong then obviously you can calculate the probability yes predetermine where you will be born and that is why all these astrologers and gurus they can you know actually see what is going to happen for your next 10 births why because you have so strong deterministic bonds with everything so some people have bonds with the land they are born in where they have done their farming and so on <laughs> they cannot go anywhere else they take birth there only so we are fortunate that we found a way out of these bondage all you need to do is make a wish very strong intention i don't want this and then intend for something which you want you know that is more positive i want this kind of birth i want that kind of birth i want a spiritual birth a spiritual mother in this country bhutan why probably that is the spiritual country today so on or i can give you a shortcut simply pray to the guru feel that no matter where i am born i'll get a guru who is of the same path i should get the guru who is of the same path so that my practice is not wasted which i did in this lifetime or previous lifetimes and that guru takes care of everything because you know your life is completely superficial it has no meaning and the only meaningful life is a spiritual life and without a guru that life is impossible otherwise it is what forming of bonds getting more and more entangled in the illusion you remember the law of the illusion entropy increases <laughs> so it is going to dirt only devolution and only a spiritual person has this freedom to evolve and that is possible because of the guru so the best advice in the spirituality you know everywhere i've seen this thing every tradition that uh, hold this intention to meet a guru some people even plan for this the age they will meet the guru you know i want to meet the guru after the age of 35 why because i want to marry i want to do business i want to earn money you know there are unfulfilled desires because the guru won't let it happen if he meets me before that so they program their birth somehow like this but it is very complicated so uh, for a simple seeker holding the intention that i should progress is enough you know i pray to the guru feel that no matter where i am born no matter how many births i take i should progress i should remain on the path this is my wish and then everything is taken care of you see they don't need to micromanage things because probably nobody knows how to micromanage it you say your overall wish if you cannot pray to guru feel you don't know what it is you simply email it to me that is the modern method preeti is saying it is said that guru knows past present future by seeing the person what actually guru see do they see it like a movie or it's like energy field <laughs> i don't know i don't know what what is my experience is when you want to guide that person let us say you are the person if i want to guide you look you should do this you should not do that then the needed information is already present in your mind there is no need to see the full future why i mean is it even possible so yes the overall tendencies can be seen and the right guidance is now given that is all there is all i know actually yes there can be some really talented people who can actually see the events that are going to happen and yes sometimes there there are these are also made known to me playfully that look this fellow is going to be born as a woman not as a man and she will do this and that you know sometimes it comes up there like this now whether it will happen or not we don't know but yes if you need a spiritual guidance whatever is needed to guide that person is given especially when you are peaceful you have good intentions you are selflessly serving that person probably if a guru is you know saying i need 10000 before i can guide you and not selfless you see so he is doing it for money and then whatever he does is his own you can say guess so the guru needs to remain pure so that he can guide properly as soon as you take something from the student yes the ego jumps in and the ego decides what will do with the student <laughs> that is impurity so it is like a loving detachment that kind of relation is there with the student loving detachment and then the right guidance can be given 
like she was asking or it's like energy field yes you know if you are you sit with the person you will come to know many things if you are silent within there is no boundary between the mind so you will get a overall impression of that person actually if you have a little bit of experience in dealing with people simply looking at them will give you a little bit of information about their past lives and future lives and what not simply look at the person what he does how he talks how he looks it starts from there and uh, then the the energy comes later you see you you hear what they say and you can get the contents of their minds which is what i do mostly i talk to the person let them speak <laughs> and then i come to know everything about that person don't need to do any kind of magic or the subtle vibrations are picked up by the sensitive people and then you can come to know about everything present future past and it will be i don't think it will be like a movie or pictures it is mostly like um, feelings you feel good or you feel bad you know that is the basic thing yes or no or there can be more complex feelings you feel joy you feel love or you hate that person simply sitting there but you hate the person you need some training to interpret these signals that are coming we call it the energy field yes whatever you call it in the occult or or whatever vibration so without this training we are going to interpret it differently so only a guru is trained to know something otherwise there are many people who are so sensitive but uh, they don't know why they are getting this kind of feelings how to say or rather feel that guru is found it is very easy your ignorance will drop your happiness will increase your peace will increase your questions will be gone and you will feel comfortable with that guru it's not li- like that i am stuck with this fellow it is not like this so it is like a love affair kind of thing where you want to be with the guru you want to listen to the guru you want to talk to the guru you want to meet the guru you say if this has happened then you have found the guru yes you learned a few things here and there you some big words sanskrit words and they are not the guarantee that you have found the guru you have found a knowledgeable person you see a teacher somebody who can guide you but guru is something totally different like he was talking about the bonds if a person attracts you so much even though he has only little bit of knowledge you see like neem karoli baba or whatever there is a bond but that means he is the guru when bitter truth is that if you never studied in your all the lifetimes previous births the, this birth or whatever then there is a chance that you will not find a guru then you go to the nearest person whom you think will can teach me start there start building the relation start building the bond and of course you don't like then leave that person find somebody else so the new seekers they struggle to find their guru they don't even know who will be the suitable guru for them what will be my path they don't know this thing so the guru can see this also <laughs> and we simply help them whatever we can you see those who are on the path let us say the path of knowledge or any other they recognize their guru immediately simply by listening to the words probably not by looking at the face because you know face does not tell you much so you don't fall in love with that person you fall in love with what he is saying actually that is more useful for you and immediately somewhere inside you will recognize that yes this person is the one i was looking for i was searching for and even if there are no bonds there you know who knows how much true this story is even if there are no bonds the bonds will be formed in this lifetime all you need to do all the condition is that you must like the guru this is the condition sometimes we are impressed by people but we don't really like them he has done this he has done that uh, he has done the consecration and all you see he can do the miracles but somehow you say no i don't want this headache and yes you know the bitter truth is many people will not find their guru in this lifetime so manage somehow you see try try from somewhere start from somewhere pray please send me a guru that is the most potent prayer in the world please send me 1 million please send me a beautiful girl no nothing will happen as soon as you pray for a guru you know almost guaranteed something will happen sooner or later we don't know when pray like this i need to progress my path is spiritual now i don't know which one please send the guru you know, like a baby you can pray like this remember something will happen and then you should be open for it that means you are ready and that means something can be done somebody can appear there in front of you otherwise you will spend whole of your life finding the guru which is kind of impossible isn't it for a newcomer with no third eye open you know 
whatever whatever they say even your two eyes are even you know even your two eyes are not open properly how will you find the guru siddhant is saying this is my personal experience yes many people will agree about this thing the guru finds the disciple so opposite jay singh only after coming here i realized there is a need to find guru yes yes start now there are you know some basic guidelines that are that i have already published on this uh, whole guru affair it is called the guru logy i don't know where it is podcast or some youtube somewhere or, or blog post hindi video is called the guru gyan guru logy so the extreme newcomers will be benefited by that Preeti is asking, is it possible that someone on their deathbed can get the realization of the truth? You see, po- possible yes, but uh, chances are very less because when the person is dying, his last wish will be to know the truth. That will be the last thing on his mind that I want to know the truth. Or there can be some extraordinary people who will be there will be more opening at the time of death because they are facing the death now. So the existential question: Who am I? <laughs> why i need to die what is beyond death will i meet the god or will i go to hell you know there is a little bit of opening in the end so sometimes you know can happen but it is really useless isn't it How, however if that happens you know if the, if somebody dies with this questions or a little bit of glimpse of the truth then probably their next birth will be in a place in a family where they will get the knowledge ultimately So the last thought on your mind is more important most important actually you must have seen this in the your daily routine that if you sleep with a thought thinking something some it, it has to be important some something important you will wake up with the same thought so the sleep is like a little death so in your last moments if you engage yourself you know last few days let us say week two weeks one month old age if you spend a complete spirituality in reading about it in listening with your guru with the seekers then there is a good chance that you know next life will be beneficial for you and knowing this you know the ancient people knew this very well they uh, designed some rituals for the dying people and nowadays it's all garbage and this superstition came that if you die near this river or in this kashi city or some <laughs> because these cities were the uh, uh, you can say headquarters of spirituality in the old days so they did not literally mean that you go there and die they they meant that you spend your time there with uh, knowledgeable people spiritual people philosophers and so on spend your last days there this was the recommendation and now it has become a superstition all the rituals that are performed on the dead body are totally garbage so you need to find uh, a good place to die in a good environment so that you can take advantage of this last, last thought and who knows you can get the realization it will be useless because you are going to forget it immediately the best way is to get the guru get the knowledge while you are still alive and that is common sense you know what happens is some people listen to these kind of rumors miracles that oh he got the realization when he was dying okay then no problem i'll also wait for the death and that is stupidity it is not a general rule one out of a million got this kind of you know by chance so the intelligent person never wastes the time does that which is most important first first priority is that everything else comes later that is what we call as the seeker a very very mature seeker is like this his first priority is always knowledge or cultivation or you can say evolution purification whatever is prescribed by his guru is his first priority and the other things they may happen may not happen completely useless life so mostly you will see the worldly people are upside down for them the spirituality is the last and this example is probably one of them that right at the moment of the death they say okay who am i now <laughs> wasted the whole life you see siddhar has a question hopefully he's finished typing i realize that thoughts have consequences i want to get rid of this pattern so this is simply a case of indoctrination where you are indoctrinated into something okay he says i know awareness will help here but is there something to get rid of this immediately yes yes there is and that is called uh, stubbornness you need to become stubborn you know how these people are they are told not to do this and they do only that 
so if some some task is given which is not your every day become stubborn now you need to leave everything and do only this whether i fail or i don't fail and yes it it needs no awareness actually just stubbornness and yes people are going to say you are mad so you need to ignore this is very fast so what we are doing here is we are channeling the same energy that went into doing something useless if you are stubborn isn't it when you are stubborn you do something useless but we can channel the same energy into removing this blockage so you will find little bit little bit of um, strange uh, reactions from the mind but then it will settle down and this blockage this pattern will be removed you can try this one this trick for some time and then you can you can ask me again you can message me again let us say after one or two months or three months and i don't know how much immediately you want it but it cannot happen in one night you see it can take little bit of time i have used this thing you know i used to be very bad in mathematics so everybody laughed at me because they were geniuses somehow i don't know how these people they knew answer to every problem in the mathematics so when they i became like got irritated by this whenever i try to solve the mathematical problem the first thing the first thoughts i get is it is impossible i will never be able to do this but you see i went into secrecy like i did not tell anybody and i became stubborn that i will learn this thing so bought the books and it it is it is a story of my school days in the vacation time when there were no schools i got all the books and all and i started studying myself stubbornly the thing is then you see it became my subject mathematics and science so very powerful technique but nobody told me this technique that is the funny thing it is like something like reverse psychology or something you know you challenge somebody in it look this is the hill you cannot climb this hill you don't have the guts to climb this hill show me you know you're challenging that fellow now even if it does not want to climb the hill <laughs> he will climb it simply to show that he can do it so you can use this trick on your own mind but is the permanent solution is awareness but since you don't want it right now you do both who is stopping you you're already doing the awareness um, practice why should you should stop this and you know continue more fuel in the fire preeti singh is called negative motivation here is something you know like a technique to break the blockage somehow pushing it you're pushing it you know pulling it but nothing happens so you simply break it madhuri singh i applied it for learning english and it took 6 months very good but you see we don't recommend it to everybody because it has very strange effects the mind can can retaliate or rebel sometimes it will cause very physical manifestations so <laughs> be aware you see if you fall sick doing this it's not real sickness habitually it was negating that job that you know it finds difficult because of the indoctrination now you are trying to overcome it so it produces a physical manifestation oh no i am tired today i am sleepy today i am i am having headache today tomorrow i'll do it you see and there will be real sensation in the body and this is all mind this happens to many people who are doing the program you see they are alive lively jumping here and there as soon as they start the video fall asleep or they get something or the other you know they feel hungry or whatever sexual arousal something like this what is that that is the mind normally we call it impurities these are the impurities and on the path of knowledge we don't do anything about the impurity nothing at all unless it is uh, causing you know some kind of damage or uh, the person is very slow on the path you don't remove it why because it gets removed as soon as you become perfect in awareness as soon as you are established in your true self now you will find it uh, very easy to do whatever you want of course there are limitations of the body and the mind but these kinds of blockages will be gone in seconds so it looks like we are ending now the time is ending so hopefully everybody got their answers and uh, thank you everyone for uh, coming in today's satsang we'll meet again next time